When we're talking about demonstrating a product a customer can't touch and feel in a physical store, video is a great way to do it. I'm Daniel Burstein, Director of Editorial Content at Marketing Sherpa. And with me now is Sukinder Singh Cassidy, Chairman and Founder of Joyous. Thanks for joining us, Sukinder. Hi. So, First of all, we're right here at the Marketing Sherpa Media Center at IRCE. Of we're course. using video right now. We're trying to it. communicate with it <laughs> as a medium. Tell us, what are your some tips to other online retailers of how they can use video to really engage customers, tear down that wall, let them experience a product? Um, well, I think a couple of key things. Number one, I think regardless of what you're doing, I think you want to create a sustained relationship with your audience. Find the person who represents the brand voice and use them repeatedly. You know, so I think there's lots of novelty in using sort of different people to speak about your products, but the benefit of using the same person as an example is affinity, building affinity for your content, right? It happens also through the person who's sort of speaking the content, if you will. I think that's one big one. And then and then obviously the other thing about video, whether you use it like joyous, we do a joyous for products or for any message, is you've got to keep it really tight, right? So when we talk about product messaging, we're typically, you know, seeing that a product a video about a single product outperforms sometime a video that has four products in it. Why? Because you can focus people's attention. So I think just keeping in mind sort of getting that unique selling proposition of your product or your service or whatever it is through video very quickly um, and keeping it and keeping the presentation really tight, not giving the user too much choice, so to speak, in a video is also a key selling tip in video. Okay, great. And once you have that video, there's yeah. a lot of different ways you can display it. Of One of them we see here is through Facebook. Yes. Um, and we had a question from our audience about hiring for social media. If you had any mm -hmm. advice on Hiring for social media, can you train people for social media? Is it something they already need to know when they come on? How do you, how do, you do this? You know, I think the way we think about social media, and you probably can appreciate this, I think, I mean, look, we've had interns do social media, and you know, right now we have somebody full-time doing social media. I think the key is that you get the brand and get the brand voice. And I think number two, I mean, obviously our best social media marketers, they love creating content and just engaging with the user. As you all probably know, um, the, strat the strategy for a great social media presence is actually to create content for the customer, not just post your regular content. And so we've seen that the women who are really passionate about what we do, health, be fitness, beauty, actually tend to be uh, some of our best marketers, even if they haven't done social media marketing before. Excellent. And then, so social media is one thing. You're also using email to mm -hmm. distribute some of these videos. Can you tell us a bit about your email strategy and some of your results? Sure. So, um, of course, the choice where long, you know, video. Like that's our core thesis. So um, our emails every day have one to two new videos in them. Large hero placement. Um, as in still photography, the hero image for a video is very important to get somebody to click through to watch the video. So large visual images, even when you want to get somebody to watch the video, are much better than just a screen grab of some action shot of the video. Um, and that's, very, that's a very big one for us. And then a very succinct product description with the selling point of the video in the video title. Very important for email. You need to sell people to actually watch the yes, video too, not just the product. You're selling people to watch the video before they watch the video, right? And so we keep our um, we keep our video titles also kind of a very um, very tight on the unique selling proposition of that video. Okay. Now let's look at the site itself. So can you kind of walk us through this page and what you're trying to do? Oh well, this page is actually a prototype of what we're thinking about for the smart TV. Um, oh okay. So. Uh, Joyce.com you can pull, put on full screen, but in our web presence, the native player is about this size. When we think about television, we believe that the native size of the video should be the full screen. You know, and, and on the web you can opt to go here, but for, as for television, what we're imagining is a completely immersive experience where the product is actually floating on the screen, and then you have a navigation channel up top that's very similar to what you might find on a Netflix app or a, a HBO Go app, so really modeled much more after the content companies who do a great job on the smart TV. And you bring up that great point because you're probably competing somewhat with those content companies too, I not just other degree, e Yes, but. of course. I mean, on compelling content, yes. You know, and con certainly ours is content about shopping and about lifestyle. But of course, I think we're trying to take the memes the user knows from actually great video sites. Let me ask you, lastly, Forbes magazine recently named you one of the six top women in e-commerce, so congratulations on that, first Thank of all. You. But in that profile, you quoted Jeff Bezos, you yes. used to work at Amazon, yep, yep. and he made the great point of, when customers go to your site, mm -hmm. they're looking for a product, yes. right? They're not looking necessarily for something from your site only, yes, and yes. so you were encouraging companies to, with your site search, yes. serve, serve customers even when you can't serve them from your through, own site. From retail, exactly. I mean, you know, I think one of the things we all ought to credit Jeff Bezos with, among many other things, is the notion that a retailer can be a marketplace, right? I mean, really, Amazon had that vision 10 plus years ago, right? And even kind of at that point, Jeff's category managers were retail category managers, and he was acquiring companies like the one I was at, Jungly, to actually serve the first version of what is today Amazon Marketplace. And so at Joyce, we think about the same thing. You know, today we're a retailer, tomorrow we think of ourselves as a marketplace, and we think that those two things can and should coexist. 
should be seamless to the customer. Retailer Marketplace sounds like and content company. Yes, and content company. Excellent. Okay, thank you very much for joining <laughs> right. us, Sukinder. Thank you. And you can see a lot more content, a lot more video content from IRCE at marketingsherpa.com slash IRCE.